We're watching the royally talented Sheku Kane Mason showing off his mastery of the cello at that most royal of occasions yesterday. And Lee Cowan tells us there's lots more talent like his back home. In an otherwise ordinary Nottingham neighborhood in the UK, an open window reveals just how extraordinary the family who lives inside really is. Behind every door, you'll find it. From the upstairs bedrooms to the downstairs living room. In the study, even in the bathroom. Seven brothers and sisters, ages 8 to 21, all creating a classical cacophony that may rattle the rafters, but not their proud parents. We don't really hear I it. Don't notice. <laughs> but if people come and visit, they say, oh my goodness, yes. it's really noisy. And we say, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stuart yeah. Mason and his wife, Cotty Kenney, never intended to raise their own private chamber orchestra, but no one nearby seemed to mind. What do the neighbors think? And we've never had a complaint ever. Brian at one point was playing the violin. It was summer, the window was open. There was a round of applause from the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think they're good by themselves, you should hear what they're like together. Whether in their front hall or on national television. The Cannon Masons first came to fame after all but the youngest appeared on Britain's Got Talent back in 2015. They made it all the way to the semifinals. That's a pretty big deal for classical music. You could be probably the most talented family in the world. Yeah! <laughs> Royally talented, it turns out. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle invited one of the Kane Masons, 19-year-old Sheku, to perform a cello solo at their wedding yesterday at St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. Not a bad gig. Sheku may have been singled out, but actually the whole family has the same talent for classical music woven into their genes. <laughs> yeah. It started with the eldest, Isida, who began taking music lessons at age six. When did you start realizing this was more than just Oh, she's relatively good at the piano. Oh, quite early on. And then she got the highest marks in the country for her grade seven and grade eight piano exams. And we thought, OK, she must be OK then. <laughs> Next came Isida's equally talented brother, Brima. Brima was so good at the violin that I just gave up. And I was like, OK, I'm <laughs> just going to be a pianist. Up the, I later then gave up the piano. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it all worked. Yeah. And then how did you start with the cello then? So I, did, I, did, I didn't really like, like the violin at all. And then um, I saw like an orchestral concert and got really excited by the sound of the cello. The folks at the prestigious Royal Academy of Music in London liked Sheku's sound on the cello too. So much so, they gave him a scholarship. They did the same for Brima and Isaac, who received the coveted Elton John scholarship. The three of them often practice together as a trio and seem to know what each other is thinking almost before they say it. It wasn't the coaching, because he did do it. Yeah, but that was, that was slightly slower. And very rarely does someone get offended when you say something, because we know, yeah. we know the intentions are always yeah. to get the best Even out if you're of, critical? To get the yeah, because yeah, always, always, always yeah. Yeah, the, the intention is to get the best out of the group, and we all understand that. They've set the bar pretty high for their younger siblings, but so you're right at the heel. they're catching up. That's it. Jenaba, Emanata, and Kanya are all studying at the Royal Junior Academy, also on scholarship. You didn't feel like pressured that all oh, my brothers and sisters are doing it, I better do it too. <laughs> it was always very much a choice, like um, we had the option to do whatever we wanted, but then just seeing um, all of our siblings also playing classical music, it, it just seemed like something we wanted to do. Every Saturday, they get up at 4.30 in the morning and along with their mom, catch a train that takes them 130 miles into London. They make their way from the station to the academy on foot, all with instruments in tow. We'll sleep on the train on the way there, sleep on the way back to get our energy for the day. <laughs> How often do you practice? On a school day, two to three hours, and then on the weekend we might do five, six or seven hours. 
lot is expected of them here. Lovely. But no more than the Kenny Masons expect of themselves. The Kenny Masons don't just happen. This is all from years and years of hours and hours of practice. And for that, I'm hugely respectful of what they've done. Howard Ionescu is the Junior Academy's director. Do you think they're prodigies? Is that the right word? I tend to steer away from that word. I think they're exceptionally gifted, but they've wanted to take that gift and move forward with it. They are a tight-knit family that doesn't take itself too seriously. <laughs> it's not to say, though, that a little sibling rivalry doesn't rear its head from time to time. Is there a little bit of competition between all of you? Uh, yeah, a friendly competition. Oh. Because there are so many of us you want to, like, show yourself in the family. Exactly. Well, I think, I think the competition is good because it constantly keeps us working, constantly practicing. Still, the success of one, they say, is a success for all. When earlier this year, five of them were asked to play at the BAFTAs, Britain's version of the Oscars, they shared the red carpet with the likes of Brian Cranston, Orlando Bloom, and Jennifer Lawrence. A fan even asked for Sheku's autograph. Ever since winning the distinguished BBC Young Musician competition at age 16, Sheku has become a bit of a celebrity. He became the first black winner in the competition's history by captivating the judges with his feelings an emotion that seems to transport him somewhere else. Into the bubble, as we call it. It's the bubble? Yeah. You see this a lot with truly gifted people. The trick with him is that he goes into his bubble, but we don't get cut off. You always feel part of his performance. And what is that that makes you feel <laughs> a part of it? Very or that's, that's very the different. gift, right? That's the gift. This past February, Sheku released his first album, Inspiration which, not surprisingly, topped the UK classical charts. But it also made it into the top 20 on the pop charts with music from Bob Marley. How do you do Bob Marley on the cello, though? Um, it's not something that's often done, I don't think. <laughs> no, I don't think so. This was Sheku's own arrangement of No Woman, No Cry. The video immediately went viral. He's tapped into something for people who aren't necessarily engaged in classical music. And he's, he's brought he's, a whole new audience in. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's, that is incredibly exciting. Which may be why he was invited to play at yesterday's royal wedding, seen by millions around the world. But none of this has gone to his head? No. no. Mm, it's been he's really completely good. unruffled, mm. actually. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, it can't. He's got so many brothers and sisters who would, would stand for that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, he's trying to help the youngest yeah. Kenny Mason of all, eight-year-old Mariatu, surpass even him. So, Sheku said that he thinks you're going to be better than he is someday. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I probably will be. <laughs> you think? <know>? Yeah. <laughs> How come? Well, it just takes practice, because you don't just be amazing, it takes lots of practice. It's likely no one is going to out-practice a Kenny Mason. Every minute they toil is driven by a love of classical music surpassed only by their desire to perform it. Music, after all, is meant to be shared. And in that, the Kenny Masons are as unselfish as they come.